That house filled with tears. Hundreds gathered on the Orange Coast College baseball diamond to celebrate the life of the man they called Coach Alto, who had headed the team for nearly 30 years. John Altabelli, his wife Carrie, and their daughter Alyssa were among those killed in Sunday's helicopter crash, along with basketball legend Kobe Bryant. The five-time NBA champ, 18-time All-Star, two-time Olympic gold medalist, Oscar winner, husband, and father. At the Staples Center and around the world, fans and family are trying to come to terms with the shocking deaths of Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, and seven others. Through the tears and tributes comes many questions, mostly why and how that helicopter crashed. It was supposed to be a quick trip to a girls' basketball game. Five parents and three teenagers flown by a pilot with more than 20 years' experience. The Bryant's day had started with an early morning mass. He was here before the 7 a.m. mass, and that's our first mass of the day. 9.06 a.m., Kobe Bryant's helicopter left Orange County Airport to head to Thousand Oaks. They normally go up kind of around Burbank and Van Nuys and then head over to the Thousand Oaks area. And there was a problem at Burbank. The, there were, the weather was there, and he was told to circle for a while. This new video shows the helicopter circling over Glendale, California, around 9.30 a.m. At 9.44, witnesses reported hearing a helicopter flying low. The house was shaking, and it was the sound of, like, 30 Harley Davidson choppers. You know, that's how loud it is. David Ludmirsky told my colleague Tom Yamas that he was startled to see how low it was flying. He says he's given his video to the NTSB. He's flying above the fog. No, lower than the fog, so really, really low, like just right above that tree. And like that's a, why you started shooting, because this, yeah. this seemed odd. Yeah. Air traffic controllers informed the pilot that they could not detect him on radar. Two Echo X-ray, what is the intention? Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. The last thing we hear, and this is really telling, you can hear it in the controller's voice. He's asking the pilot, using his call letters, are you out there? And he gets no response. One witness called 911 after hearing a big thud, saying the fog was thick as milk at the time. You can hear the helicopter and oh, you, you can't hear see anything. I can't see anything. I'm hearing the helicopter, all of a sudden the helicopter's immediately above me. If I couldn't see it and I'm looking directly up at it, he, he's not going to be able to see anything in, on the ground. What's unusual is that the aircraft was actually accelerating as it was descending. And that's unexplained so far. Did something mechanically go wrong? Or did the pilot put in an input that was really counterintuitive to what he should have been doing? And we really don't have the answer to that yet. These are new images showing the catastrophic scene. Investigators are picking through the mangled mess of wires, charred metal, and shredded fiberglass. NTSB continues to investigate. They say there was no black box or a cockpit voice recorder, and the helicopter wasn't required to have them. But there may have been an iPad with an app pilots use to navigate. There's a chance that that iPad could actually have important data, airspeed, altitude, could tell us those final moments like a data recorder would that this helicopter didn't have. Helicopters were a preferred method of getting around L.A. for Bryant for a reason. He discussed that reason during his interview with Barstool Sports. I, mean, I had to figure out a way where I could still train and focus on the craft, but still not compromise family time. Mm. And so that's when I looked into helicopters and be able to get down and back in 15 minutes. And, mm -hmm. and that's when it started. And so my routine was always the same. Waits early in the morning, kids to school, fly down, practice like crazy, do my extra work, media, everything I needed to do, fly back, get back in carpool line, pick the kids up. Gianna's teammate Alyssa was among the victims, along with her parents, Carrie and John Altabelli, the coach of the Orange Coast baseball team. He was big hearted, he was caring, uh, loved everybody involved with our program, loved uh, family, loved his children, loved his wife. We'll miss him terribly. His wife, Carrie, a source of support. You could just see the love, you know, that she has for her husband. Sarah Chester and her daughter Peyton also died on Sunday. Peyton was in the eighth grade at St. Margaret's Episcopal School. The head of the school says, we are a community in mourning, adding, 
This is an unimaginable loss for the Chester family and the entire St. Margaret's community. We always were kind of just fearful of her flying in a helicopter. Mad Mauser lost his wife of nearly 15 years, Christina. She was the assistant coach of Bryant's Mamba Academy basketball team and was hand-picked by the basketball legend. Kobe didn't pick my wife because she was average. <laughs> I don't think anything he ever did was average. He picked my wife because she was exceptional at what she did. My wife had a brilliant, brilliant um, eye for coaching. She, she picked up schemes. She knew every angle. She knew defenses. She knew defense positioning. She knew post moves. She really took a lot of, uh, of pride in being there for those girls. And she absolutely adored them. What was the last thing you said to her? I was in see bed. You. She kissed me and said, I'll see you tonight. So goodbye. <laughs> love you. I hope I said I love you. I hope I said I love you. I just don't know. The group was flown by Air Azabian. The company who trained him released a statement saying, we are heartbroken at the loss of our friend and pilot, Air Azabian. Flying was his life's passion. Outside the stadium where Kobe thrilled fans for decades, still a place of mourning. Inside, the court is dark. Fans did hear from the team's current star, LeBron James, who posted, sitting here trying to write something for this post, but every time I try, I begin crying again, just thinking about you, niece Gigi, and the friendship, bond, brotherhood we had. And former teammate Shaquille O'Neal speaking on tonight's NBA on TNT pregame show. The fact that uh, we're not going to be able to joke at his Hall of Fame ceremony, we're not going to be able to say, hi, I got five, you got four. The fact that we're not going to be able to say, if we would stay together, we could have got 10. Those are the things that you, you can't get back. Tributes for Kobe's daughter as well. Late Monday evening, the women's basketball team at the University of Connecticut, where Gianna hoped to play, posted this tribute. And this afternoon in Orange Coast. A lot of hugs, a lot of sad. Today, for the next three hours, your focus is playing baseball. These young baseball players remembering their beloved coach and his family by doing what they say he would want most. Take the feed. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.